Hello there, everyone. How you doing today? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're going into r slash entitled parents to find some stories of some parents who have their head up their butt because they have children. If you enjoy, please like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get started. A mother came into my workplace and left her kid while she went to get McDonald's for herself. Then she called the police on the manager and my supervisor. Pretty long story, so TLDR. There was a mother that brought a kindergarten age kid to my workplace, and after spending five hours dragging this kid around the store, she left the kid with the manager, got McDonald's for herself, and then called the police on the manager for leaving her kid in the back office. So, first of all, this wasn't the first time this happened. The mother had come in a few times before and left her kid, maybe six years old or so, in the toy aisle, while her, and sometimes also her husband, would go to the grocery store across the parking lot. Yesterday, this mother spent almost four hours in there, and with the kid sitting in the seat part of the shopping cart. After hour four, the kid started getting bored, tired, and hungry, and was beginning to throw tantrums, complain about how she was hungry, and asked to be bought things. The mother got fed up fast, so she took the kid to the bathroom, and we heard slapping noises, and the kid was quiet for a while after that, but eventually started back up. Getting annoyed for a second time, the mother brought the kid up to the front counter where she, where the front end manager was standing. She placed the kid on the counter and told the manager that she had to run to the car for a minute and that she'd be right back. After a while, the front end manager got confused and picked up the kid and went to go check out the door of the store. The kid pointed out that my mom's car is gone. So, the manager took her to the back office where my supervisor was having his break. The manager explained the situation to him, and he brought the kid a bag of chips, a chocolate bar, and a can of pop from the vending machine, and let her use YouTube on the office computer. Over 40 minutes later, the mother comes back with a drink and a pretty much fully eaten thing of fries from McDonald's and loses her mind at the front end manager for even thinking of leaving her child with some random man in the back of the store. The mother then called the police and explained what the manager had done and how it terrified her to think of what he could have done to her daughter. One police officer ended up picking up the child and carried her outside. The other officer took notes and guided the mother to the cruiser, sat her inside, and came back and thanked the manager and my supervisor for going out of their way to watch the kid. My supervisor was also assured that he wouldn't be in any trouble whatsoever. Another police cruiser showed up a little while later, and the kid was placed in that one. Then both cars left the parking lot, and I never seen them after. The mother's car ended up being towed. Within an hour of this incident, the store put up a new policy in the front window. Any child left attended for more than 20 minutes, or any child that can't point out or find their parents with the help of a manager or supervisor, will be considered abandoned and police will be contacted immediately. And something about my supervisor. He's the happiest, friendliest dude you'll ever meet in your life. He's been married to only one woman for 12 years, has two biological children, and four fully adopted children that had been his foster children before. He's the best person that could could have been left with. Aw, that's nice. Well, not for the mom, but the manager was nice. The tales of my entitled grandmother, my fiancé, my daughter, and I. About six months ago, I gave birth to a baby girl. She's obviously my world, and her father's too. Our families have supported up us full way through. One person specifically has given us multiple problems that we have considered cutting her off. 
My Grandmother. Incident 1. The Weight Treatment. My fiancé and I were talking about buying bathing suits for the summer, for the baby and I. I've been very sensitive about my weight because I don't lose as easily as I gain. But she went too far with adding my baby in there. Entitled Grandmother. Aren't you going to lose a little weight before you buy one? Me. She doesn't need to lose any weight. She'll be fine just the way she is. And what about the baby? She won't fit in a 4M. At the time, she was a 3M. Why wouldn't she? She's 3M. She has so much fat on her bones. She's not going to fit. She should consider maybe doing a 6M or... You could feed her a little less. Interrupting the story real quick. Who in their right mind fat shames a baby? Oh my god. My mother and I were horrified to hear it. In this discussion, I had not yet started to stand up for myself against her. She was seriously saying that my baby and I were overweight. Obviously, I'm leaving some text out for the personal issues, but she went on to say that it wouldn't look good with my weight or that my baby isn't healthy with the way she is. She is completely healthy for her weight. She just has a little chug to her. Incident 2. She believes she is a second mom to my baby. A few weeks back, her and I were having a conversation about going down to a random place, but equally as far, Pittsburgh, so his mom could see the baby, and she kept making a fuss. She'll be too far! How will I be able to see her? S, this is me. You'll be able to see her when we get back. We're only going for about a week, if that. His mom hasn't seen her since she was born. It's been five months. She's a grandmother, too. I don't feel comfortable with her seeing my baby when I haven't met her. Does she know how to take care of her? I don't know if she'll be safe there. She's not your baby. She's mine. And oh, my fiance's first initial. Please stop acting like you're her parents. We're completely aware of how his mom is and we believe she'll be fine with her. It's not like we're leaving her there. Furthermore, she has three kids, two of which she's still taken care of. And then the entitled grandmother says, Stop acting like you're only entitled to making decisions about her. I have the right. You're still underage. I admittedly had her at 16, almost 17, and have mental issues. Therefore, I have the right to make decisions. At this point, she was screaming at me. For all I know, you could hurt her. You're unpredictable. You're completely unstable. First things first, I have anxiety, not schizophrenia. My behavior isn't predi unpredictable. You can hardly take care of yourself. I'm sorry I messed up your relationship with your seven kids, then proceeded to choose men over them. You had your chance to be a mother. You failed. You had your chance to be a grandmother. You're shit. Step aside and let us be a parent to our daughter. The way we intend to. We would have never been able to move out if I was unstable as you make it to be. Yeah, I have issues, but I'm not dysfunctional. I then took my daughter and left. She's been telling lies to the family, but what she didn't know is I was on a FaceTime with one of my other family members who had muted themselves when she started making her fuss. Incident 3. As if number 2 wasn't bad enough, she got worse. Entitled grandmother started to take her pills way more often than she should have, essentially allowing herself to become addicted to them. She lied, accused us of stealing, accused us of trying to keep my daughter away from her, and eventually accused my fiancé of sexually assaulting me to get me pregnant, and threatening me to stay with him. I won't make a text thingy from this because it's pretty self-explanatory. She went to the police at one point spreading her lies. We even had an officer show up at her home twice stating that our 
neighbors, quote unquote, witness the next sexually explicit event. I'm stating this right now. My fiance has never forced himself on me, threatened or abused me. But yet we are still getting the cops called. We found out she told one of her friends, who then told a mom group in the neighborhood. We had to move out in December shortly after due to some money issues. Overall, she really started to decline. We then had the cops called on us for abusing our daughter. We're an hour away! We're definitely planning on cutting her off, but I have a hard time being split from my family, and I know it's going to sting when I do. Until next time, Reddit. My entitled mother stole my heart meds to blackmail me. Excuse me. Judging from that title alone, I'm just going to be like, What in the flippity flappity flapjacks is what? This is going to be a doozy of a story. A doozy of a doozy, you know? Oh, boy. Anyway. Topic warning. Severe child abuse mention. Strap in. This will be a long one. So this incident actually happened quite a few years ago, and I feel like I'm finally at a point where I can post about it. I'm hoping sharing it and hearing what you guys have to say about what happened will finally bring me some measure of closure and catharsis. For some background, I, now 33 years old, non-binary AFAB, am disabled. I was born with severe Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a genetic disorder that among many other symptoms affecting pretty much my every bodily system, causes my joints to dislocate and sublex, partially dislocate, with very little prompting. I once dislocated my shoulder by flumping down onto my bed from a sitting position too roughly. I wasn't diagnosed until I was 17 years old because EDS wasn't well recognized by most doctors back in the early 2000s having abused me in every possible sense for my entire childhood already, my extremely narcissistic alcoholic mother, the entitled parent in this story, immediately saw my diagnosis as a whole new set of ways she could hurt me. <coughs> Excuse me? Oh wow. That sucks. She would forcibly dislocate my joints as punishment for entirely imagined offenses telling me that no one would believe me if I told them she'd done it, and she'd tell them that I was just a clumsy, lying little b-word, which she'd already been branding me as for as long as I could remember. Her entitlement is deep, very deeply rooted, in every aspect of her personality. She would often stand over me, booming, As far as you're concerned, I am God. Everything under this roof is mine, my property, and that includes you and everything in your room. You don't freaking breathe without my say-so. You brought it, I don't give a poop. It's mine, and there isn't a bloody thing you could do about it, because I am God. And she did that sober, too. Yep, so entitled she was basically delusional. My father was, and remains, such a pathetic excuse for a parent that I genuinely almost forgot to mention him here. He constantly enabled her abuse, convinced us it was our fault that she was abusing us, and actively prevented my younger sister and me from getting help. When I was 24 years old, I was finally able to move out of my parents' house, my sister having moved out a year or two earlier. With the help of support of my friends, I moved in with my BFF, but was still very much under my parents' control psychologically. My mother would quote-unquote help me by picking up a particular heart medication for me from a hospital that was about 90 minutes away by bus since I couldn't drive. She's always made such a massive fuss about it. And... What such a huge favor she was doing for me, guilting me as much as she possibly could. At this point, I was so beaten down and small that I would apologize for everything, like literally preface everything I said with, Hi, I I'm sorry, but, and end everything pretty much with, sorry again. I was a mess, and nearly a decade after escaping the hellhole, I'm still rebuilding my sense of self. 
On the day of the incident, that's the focus of the story, we had arranged for my EM to pick up my meds and meet me at my local shopping mall where I'd been getting a few grocery items to give me the meds and drive me home. One of her favorite things to do, and always has been, to make people wait for her. Presumably because it gives her a sense of power over others. So I knew to expect her to be late. She'd already been yelled, yelling at me over the phone that I had to be outside, standing at the curb in the car park when she pulled up, or she would just keep driving. Which wasn't a bluff, because she'd done that before, just because I'd been sitting on a bench a few feet back when she'd arrive. God forbid anyone keep her waiting. So, ten minutes before the agreed upon time, I was standing at the curb, groceries bagged up, and ready to go. As our meetup time passed, I had to sit down on the ground and it started raining. I should add here that being out in the cold and rain sends my chronic pain through the roof, and can leave me unable to use my hands for days. So I was already annoyed at the situation, but I was also terrified of this monster of a woman. When she was 20 minutes late, I sent her a text which took me a while because of the hands, asking how far off she was. I got a nasty reply saying that she was on her way and I'd better be standing by the curb when she got there. I replied that I was sitting on the footpath in the rain, so please don't take too long. No reply. At 35 minutes late, I texted her again saying I was cold, soaking wet, and in a ton of pain, asking where the heck she was and what was taking so long. It was very unusual for me to be so direct with her. But being out of their house and with people who were working to build me back up had given me a new boldness, and I was in so much pain so I gave far less of a damn about the consequences than usual. I was trembling with anxiety as I sent it, but it still felt empowering. She called and screamed at me down the phone about how ungrateful I was, how she was going so far out of her way to do this how this massive favor for me, and that I'd be lucky if she showed up after all after I'd spoken to her like that. I pointed out that the favor is somewhat negated if you cause the person harm by screwing around them around in the process. And she screamed some more about abuse at me, told me I'd better be standing up at the curb when she got there, and that she was going to beat the living daylights out of me, and she hung up. We had two more rounds of this until... She was over an hour late, and finally I was done. Something in me finally snapped, and I was just like, screw it! After getting on the bus safely with my waterlogged shopping bags, I used text-to-speech and sent her a final text saying that I was done playing her ridiculous games and that I was taking the bus home. I told her it was completely unacceptable to demand that her dema disabled Severely chronically ill daughter stay out in the freezing rain for well over an hour, and that dad would get my meds from her and he can drop them off at my apartment. I'd already asked him and let him know what the situation was. I was a blubbering mess of delirious agony and anxiety when I got home, and my flatmate had to take the next day off to look after me. He had agreed to act as my carrier to help me escape my parents and his work was extremely good about it. In the aftermath, my entitled mom refused to give dad the medication for me, saying that if I wanted it, I would have to come back begging for her forgiveness for being such an ungrateful little sheep. She had this whole rant about it, of course, going on and on about what an awful, nasty little female dog I was, etc. Even added some ableist stuff about how she should have offed me at birth and saved themselves two decades of medical bills because I didn't deserve everything they've done and sacrificed for me. She literally demanded that I show up in person, get down on my knees, and grovel. She thought she had total power over me by holding such a crucial medication hostage. She said a bunch of stuff about how I'd better comply with her demands before I was too sick to be able to get on my knees, or tough shit, I wasn't getting them back at all. 
The most bizarre part was that she genuinely seemed to believe that I had wronged her and that she was entitled not only to an apology for, for me for standing up to myself, I guess, but to withhold my meds from me in order to force out one out of me because she said she, she knew I'd never give her what she was owed otherwise. I went to the police station to try and get them to retrieve the obviously stolen meds, but was told that because I had given the pharmacy authorization to allow her to collect and sign for the medication, it was legally hers to keep and there was nothing they could do. No, I live in Australia. I called the pharmacy and explained the whole situation to the extremely kind pharmacists, who were able to organize a new prescription for me with my specialist. Through the hospital and I had a friend who worked at nearby pick it up for me. In the meantime, my dad broke 24 years of constant spinelessness and lied to my entitled mom to scare her over into handing over the original stolen meds, saying that I'd gone to the police, but that he'd convinced me to hold off so he could give her a chance to just hand them over without police involvement. It worked, and I ended up stalked for an extra month, but the whole incident resulted in me finally cutting all contact with my entitled mom. When he dropped off of the meds, my dad tried to convince me to make peace with EM for his sake, and said that by refusing to speak to her, I was being selfish because I must know how hard it would be to make things for him, since he had to live with her. Still riding that high on that wave of boldness, I told him he was being selfish by expecting me to continue to put up with her abuse. As he always did any time I tried to stand up to myself with him, he got super nasty and vindictive, said some extremely hurtful, hurtful, deeply personal things, and left. As of a few years ago, I've now cut contact with him as well. I'm finally completely free of both of them, and have a great relationship with my sister. Now that we're both adults and have a clearer perspective on how our parents parentified me and pitted us against each other as kids. I have genuinely awesome people around me these days and still live with that same flatmate. My dad was diagnosed with a terminal illness a little while back and doesn't have much time left. Though I'm not sure how I feel about that. He finally left my EM, who, after relying on him to manage her chaotic mess of a life for decades, is utterly failing to fend for herself. She is well on her way towards ending up cold and alone, which honestly is cathartic for me to know. Pathologically entitled, abusive people deserve to have the people they abuse leave them. It's that simple. If you've read this all the way through, thank you. Getting this all out of my head has genuinely helped. It's easy to downplay and normalize crazy stuff that happens to you when it just sits in your mind for years. You're welcome, OP. I, uh, thank you for sharing your story with us. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. See you next time.